Hey everybody, it's Carolyn from Crop Candy Scrapbooking. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm channeling my inner John Oliver for those of you who watch, uh, was it last week tonight with John Oliver? Anyway, that's my little geek side coming out. But welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about print and cut. So recently I did a poll on my YouTube community page and I asked what Cricut technique basically vexes you the most that you really want to learn how to do. And no surprise, print and cut came out on top. Um, now, some of you may know what print and cut is, but for those of you who do not, if you're new to Cricut or just cutting machines in general, you may have heard this term print and cut, but have no idea what it is. Well, basically what it is, is you, it allows you to take an image from Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Design Studio, whatever you're using, and send that image to your color printer and then have the machine cut it out. So think about um, if you've seen those scrapbook kits where they'll have uh, like an embellishment pack and it's usually like card stock with like an image on it um, and it's cut out and you can use that on your page. Uh, your Cricut can do that. I'm not trying to put those companies out of business, but you can do that on your Cricut. Which machines can do print and cut? The new Joy Extra, can, you can print and cut natively now with the Cricut Joy. You could not cut print and print and cut natively with the new Joy Extras, which is the the larger version of the Joy. Um, you can do print and cut, and of course you can do print and cut on the uh, Explore Maker and Venture machines. Before you do an actual print then cut, you will need to calibrate your machine. The calibration process helps Cricut understand stand like where it's going to do its nice clean cut. If you do not do the calibration, you're not going to get a clean cut. Now you do not have to do this every time you want to print and cut. Uh, usually one time is enough, but every once in a while you might have to go back and just tweak that calibration. Uh, definitely I do it when um, you get like a firmware up, up, a firmware update from Cricut. I will do a print and cut if the machine has been, I'm sorry, a calibration. If the machine has been unplugged, I'll do a calibration. And like I said, with the firmware, you want to do a calibration. Um, again, you don't have to do it every single time, but I think it's good just every once in a while in those instances that I just outlined to do it. So let's go into Cricut Design Space and I'll show you how that process works. We are now in Cricut Design Space. And I'm, what you're going to do for the print and cut calibration is to come over here to this three bar hamburger menu. You're going to click that. And you're going to come down here and you'll see calibration. Go ahead and click calibration. And you'll get this screen. These are options actually for a maker because that's what my machine is set to. And so that's why these things are coming up. But this is the, the money one right here. Uh, print and cut. So you would click that option and then what it's going to do is going to ask you to select the printer that you're going to use for your print and cut projects. So in this case I have a Canon, um, this one here, which is a color inkjet printer. I would select that and then I would go ahead and print. So let me show you really quick what that printout looks like. This is the calibration sheet that prints out from your printer. And you're going to see it looks weird. It's got like these little tick marks here going up around the top and the side. You've got some numbers and then you got letters down here. And then you have this little square and rectangle in the center. This is what Cricut is going to use to go through its calibration process. What you're going to do after this prints out is you're going to take your mat. Preferably you want to use the light blue light grip mat if you have one on hand because if you're using printer paper, which is like copy paper, it's a lightweight paper and it could, um, you see how it's like <laughs> very, very sticky. <laughs> but what you want, you're going to do is as close as possible is line up that top edge of your paper right here on that top left 
corner. I call that the zero point because it's zero, one, two, three, four. So if you can line it up right there as perfectly as you can possibly get it along the top and along the sides onto your mat, and then you're going to, Cricut is going to prompt you to load your mat. So let's go back to the Cricut screen so you can see that. I'm going to say I already have the calibration sheet. It's going to tell you to load your paper. Just like I said in the top left hand corner, you're going to hit continue. And then it's going to go through its print then cut calibration. You're going to select your machine and then it's going to go. If you look at this video footage, you'll see where I have put the uh, item into the machine. We're going through the cutting process and then it asks me about that center square and it says, what is, you know, is it cut? pretty clean around that center square. You don't want the cut going outside of the box. You, you want it right as close as possible as you can get on those, uh, on that black line of the square. If it is not perfect, you're going to have to go through the process again. If it's close to perfect, then Cricut will go ahead and do the lines uh, with the numbers and the letters. And you're gonna repeat the same process. You're gonna, after Cricut does its cutting, you're gonna look and inspect that sheet to see which of those lines matches as closely as possible to the center as a clean cut. You don't want the cut going on the outsides of the lines. You want it as close as possible to the center of the black line and then you will select the one from the letter and the, the number that best represent uh, the cleanest cut with that cut going down the center of the line. After you do that, you'll do one more pass and then it'll cut the big rectangle and it should look good. And then after that point, your machine is calibrated. Now let's talk materials. So what kind of materials do you wanna use for print and cut. Well, if you're doing the cardstock type print and cut, then um, I just like to use regular, um, like medium weight cardstock. Uh, I think that's like 65 pound to 85 pound, um, if you see that marked on the package. But generally, it's just basic medium weight cardstock is what I use for that. And 12 by 12 sheets are fine. You can go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or uh, Joann's and you, sometimes you can find packs of eight and a half by 11 um, already cut sheets of cardstock. And I'll just sometimes just buy a pack of eight and a half by 11 white. That's generally what I use for my uh, cardstock printouts. Um, you can also just take a 12 by 12 and cut it down to eight and a half by 11. Why eight and a half by 11? Because that's the size that fits in your printer, unless you have a fancy printer that can print larger than that. But generally most of us have eight and a half by 11, um, uh, printers. So that's what I use. Now, as far as sticker paper is concerned, uh, let me show you some sticker papers that I have used in the past. Let me uh, get back to my other camera. Um, I've used this Avery white sticker project paper. You can find this at your office supply store, Staples, Office Depot, Amazon even has it. Um, these work fine. Uh, the sheets tend to be on the thinner side, so they're easier to run through your printer. Um, they're a little bit heavier than uh, your standard printer paper. They've got a backing on the on the rear, like a almost like a wax paper type backing. Um, they work fine. I've used. I mean, it's okay. It's not my favorite, uh, <laughs> but it it's doable. Um, this is old packaging, but this is printable sticker paper from Cricut. This is the old style where I think a lot of people complain. Sorry for the noise. A lot of people complained about these because it's cardstock weight and it's it's thick and it's it's kind of hard to run through your printer um i had to kind of fudge it a little bit with my 
printer, like I had to kind of push it down until it grabbed it and fed through the printer. Um, it's a pain in the neck, but I actually like the thick cardstock weight because um, I just like a thicker sticker. Thicker sticker. Thickers. I think that's a brand of stickers. Uh, the other options you have are, uh, oh, let me show you this first. This is printable clear sticker paper. So if you want clear looking sticker, like, well, your design, but the, the uh, around the sticker is clear. Um, this is an option. You've also got um, printable vinyl. Uh, this is the material. I never even opened this. So. <laughs> I bought it for something. I just don't know why I bought it now. I mean, I do that all the time. That's why I'm a scrap, scrapbook uh, junkie. Um, anyway, the vinyl, this is printable vinyl. You can use it for stickers um, as well as, oh, I did open it. I just never used it. Yeah, so it's it's vinyl. These are the thinner sheets. I think all of the Cricut, Cricut sticker sheets are now supposedly this thinner weight. I've read the reviews and people are, have been very happy about the new thinner weight. Um, but vinyl, it's just a different material that you can use, but for stickers, um, and you know you can it gives you it's just a different finish. And then this uh, vinyl sticker paper. I found on Amazon, it was like a on sale. Now that we've looked at materials, let's get into the actual printing then cutting stuff. So let me show you uh, something that is a PNG file. So there's two types of files that I generally use when with my Cricut machines. They're SVGs and they're PNGs. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. An SVG is generally a multi-layered file like this pumpkin. Each of these different colors represents a different layer of the SVG. So the eyes and the mouth are one layer. The green stem is another layer. This shadow, darker orange is a layer and this lighter orange base is a layer. So you can flatten this and actually print it out and make a sticker of it. I will show you how to do that. But I just first want you to know the difference between the two different file types. This item here is this label here and this little label here. Those are PNG files. These are files that are pre-designed. They're already flattened. You upload them into Cricut Design Space. They will, Cricut Design Space will say, I know I recognize this as a print then cut type file and it will save it as that. And then when you want to go make it, it's going to take you through the print then cut process. All right, so let's see what that looks like in Cricut Design Space. I am going to uh, grab one of those images that I just showed you. I'm going to show you the PNG file first. All right, this is our PNG added to the canvas. I select it. You could see over here in the labels panel, it's already told me it's print then cut. So that process would be, I would come over here to make it on the project preview screen. It will show me here that it is a print then cut file. Um, and it's already defaulted and said my material size is eight and a half by 11. So this would be either, this is going to be my card stock sheet, or it's going to be my sticker paper. And then I would come over here to continue. And then you get to this screen. And this is where Cricut is like, okay, let's go ahead and send this to the printer so that we can print it out onto our sticker paper or whatever material we're gonna use. I would click send to the printer, select my printer from the menu, which is this one, and it's going to ask you how many copies you want and if you want to add a bleed. I always select bleed because it gives, there's like extra ink that gets applied to the image and when you actually, uh, when Cricut cuts it out, it's, it's basically a buffer for Cricut so that 
it gives you that clean to the edge line of your image. I also always use the system dialog box because I uh, put my sticker paper in a different tray and I have to actually go in and manually tell it to use um, a different tray where I've got my material loaded. So that's what we'll do. Then you go ahead and hit print and then you'll get your sheet with the image already on it. After you print out your sheet of cardstock or sticker paper, you would then load that onto your Cricut mat and then Cricut will cut it. So then what you end up with is this little design right here. Now that's just straight cutting a, a PNG file. Now let me show you how you can take an SVG and do the same thing. So I've added Mr. Pumpkin and Mr. Squirrel to my canvas. I've made them big so that you can see. These are SVGs. If I go over to my layers panel, you'll see all of the various components that make up this image. And you'll also see that they're listed as basic cut, basic cut. Same thing on the jack-o'-lantern. You've got the same thing, basic cut, basic cut, and you'll see all of the different pieces. And I showed you that earlier in the video. Now, for this image, or for these two images, I want to make them print then cut. So I need to flatten them. So what I'll do is I will select the image and then I'll come back to the bottom of my layers panel and you'll see here where it says flatten and I select that. And what it has done is it's compressed all of the layers of that pumpkin and has and has turned it into print then cut. And the layers plan will say flatten. So you know that that's what that image is. So now it's ready for print then cut. Do the same thing with the squirrel. Come over here, flatten, turns it into print then cut. And now it's an image that I can print and have make turn it into a sticker or a card stock image. Let me show you what that looks like in person. So this was our original and they're not the same size. So don't, it's not, they're not going to shrink in real life, but this is what my original SVG file looked like with all of the different layers. And this is what it looks like as a cardstock cutout. You can see where Cricut cut it clean all around. There's no white space or anything like that. It's just a clean edge um, printed SVG. I'll show you the same thing with Mr. Squirrel. Here's the original SVG file with all of its layers. And here is the cutout version of that clean to the edge. And for this, I just use plain white cardstock paper. Now, if I were to make stickers, I would do the same thing, cutting it out on plain sticker paper. And what you get is this. So this is, this is my sticker. And here's the pumpkin version of that. Here's what Mr. Squirrel looks like on the printable clear sticker paper from Cricut. So instead of the white printing out, it's a, his, his belly is, is now clear. But this is um, the Cricut printable clear sticker paper, which is kind of cool if you want that effect. So if you want it more of like a see-through kind of thing, just make sure that you give it some time to dry because of the, the you know, it's not porous, so it's not gonna absorb the ink very, well, it does absorb the ink to a degree, but when you first print it out, it's very slick. So you need to let it sit and dry before you manipulate it. So this has been sitting for probably 24 hours before I've actually 
pulled them off of the paper, but this is, this is how it would look with the clear. Now suppose you wanted a white border around your images. You've seen that before with some stickers or cardstock cutouts. They'll have like a white border around the image. How can you do that in Cricut Design Space if you don't want that your color to go all the way over to the edge? What you would do is you'd select your image. You come up here to the top to the offset uh, menu. Using this slider, I can adjust how thick I want that offset to be. So as you can see, I slide it, you can see the change in the thickness. So I'm gonna go with that point, it looks like it says 0 0.097. My computer is far away from me, so I can't really tell. And I'll say apply. And then you can see there's my border, but I don't want it to be black, I want it to be white. So if I look on the layers panel, I make sure that offset is selected and then I'll come over here to operation and go to the color menu and change that to white. And that's what I get. And then I'll repeat that same process for the other SVG here. So here's the white border on the cardstock version. That looks nice. And let me show you on the stickers. So these are the previous stickers that I showed you. This is, you can see a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the clean version where it goes all the way to the edge. And here is the other version with the white border on. This is just plain old white Cricut sticker, sticker paper. Here it is without the border. And here it is with the border. Now you notice with sticker paper that the cut doesn't go clean through the paper. That's called a kiss cut, where it only cuts just enough so that you can lift the image off of your material. And then let's take a look at it on the clear sticker paper. Here it is with the border. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And I think I showed you earlier going all the way to the edge. And then here's the pumpkin with the border. You can see that. And then here is the pumpkin all the way to the edge. And that's pretty much all there is to print and then cut. Now you can take these techniques and do even more things <laughs> with them. Um, but this is basically the, the three operations that I use most often is, you know, a PNG and printing then cutting them or flattening an SVG and printing and cutting. And then the third option is if I want a white border around whatever, the PNG or the SVG, flattened SVG, then I use the offset function. Also want to just bring up that these images, <laughs> Mr. Pumpkin and Mr. Squirrel and the Grateful For You tag that I showed you are part of my, well, the, the squirrel and the, the little sentiment are part of my fall into autumn uh, cut file kit, scrapbooking cut file kit. Um, and I'll leave a link to that below so you can check that out. And then the pumpkin is part of my uh, fabulous Halloween scrapbook kit um, with a bunch of uh, PNGs and uh, SVGs for you to try. In fact, both of the kits are, they have scrapbook layouts in there with various elements that you can use and um, have fun with. If you found this video helpful, uh, please give me a like, 
or a heart or a thumbs up or whatever, a happy comment down in the comments box below. If you have questions about anything or if there, if you have other print and cut uh, tips to share that I did not cover in this video, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy scrapping.